All right, so from the practice test, I want to record number 16, sit with me for a little bit, and then you can have the rest of the time to try test review or ask questions or whatever. It's just your time for 20 minutes or so. Um, <clears throat> physics question time. Uh, these are really hard to set up until you get, you've tried it once or twice, so try it twice. There's another one on the test review, different problem, and you're supposed to log into Canvas on Wednesday to get the answers and ask me questions. That's my, that's my trick. That's what we're doing on Wednesday. You get to stay home, and you just have to log in, and you get the answers to the test review, these open-ended, these open-ended questions. You get the answers to those, and then I might, if I think something suspicious is up, I might post a short video to make sure you can watch it, and then, uh, Maybe there's a Google Meet. It's going to be me and my kindergartner here uh, by ourselves that day, e-learning and everything. Okay, um, <clears throat> so the really tricky part, like you can clench your fist at me one time. Like I, this is a hard question, and it's hard to set it up. Uh, <clears throat> but so and one, it's it's hard because one thing gets a head start. So we have to say like let's call this Dragonfly one. It's the same as the cars racing on the test review. Okay, it's the same kind of thing. On the real test, there might be one like this, but it won't be cars, but it'll, it'll be something similar. Okay, the first one takes off, and its acceleration is plus 8. Hopefully, you just get in the habit of writing units. And then, <coughs> it's pursued by a second one that can accelerate faster. Did you know dragonflies eat other bugs? They're like the super insect predator. They eat everything, even each other. <coughs> and they're so fast and so agile, they never crash into humans. Only cars sometimes. Anyway. Okay, how much time... Oh, dear. Whose time is what? Because I really just want one time t for, to, for both equations so I can solve it. But whose time is what? This one got a four-second head start... So should I write t plus 4 for this guy and just t for number 2? Or this one is counting. I could do t minus 4. Now, is this math? No. They're logically equivalent. So it doesn't matter which one you do. There needs to be a four-second difference between the times, but you do need to keep track of what you're calculating. So if I say, <coughs> if I give this one t plus 4, then I'm actually calculating how much time this guy had. Is that, is that what it's asking for? No. It's asking me to calculate how much time this dragonfly number 1 has in the air like, how much time does it have to live? You can imagine something nicer is happening, but probably insects are killing each other. Um, <clears throat> how long does the first one have to live before the second one catches up and probably eats it? Okay, so I actually want this to be time. And Dragonfly 2 started later, so it has t minus 4. It's four seconds behind the other one. Okay. Just for logic's sake, I would do that. Okay. And now, it's actually pretty easy. We're halfway. Perfect. Okay. Because all I'm going to do is say, well, let's pretend they're on one-dimensional motion. Let's make it x. The displacement of Dragonfly 1 equals the displacement of Dragonfly 2. How do I know that's true? That's when they catch up. That when they have the same displacement from where they started. Oh, I should include from x equals 0. Whoops. I'll try to be that smart on the test. Nobody called me on it. But when their displacement is the same, the other one will have caught up. Okay? And, to make your life reasonably easy, I had them both start from rest. So there's no V0. V0 equals 0 for both. We're not even going to write that down. So we have 1 half AT squared. 1 half times 8 
times just regular t squared equals one half times twelve times t minus four squared t minus four okay now I bet you're tempted to combine like terms and fight it out. But let's first like cancel as much as we can. And we should get like 2t squared equals, they can all be equals 3 times t minus 4. Any questions so far? But so okay, you might do what we did in algebra one or two or whatever. But I don't want to do that. That's the slow way. That's the bad way. Instead, I want to do this. I'm going to divide both sides by three. Look what I have over there. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, so I might get a plus or minus. I have to judge. I'm a professional physicist, so I know time cannot go backwards. That's a nicer equation, isn't it? It's got some weird numbers, especially if you like numbers, like put a decimal, use three or four significant figures, significant digits, Calculate the square root of 2 over 3 in your calculator. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me some more room. Okay. And then, here, I'm actually going to add my 4 to the other side. Let's write it this way. 4 equals t times 1 plus or minus this mess. Square root of 2 over 3. Okay, so actually, it's just so you can see it past me. And you have to do that in the calculator. But I didn't have to do the quadratic formula. Now, <coughs> there's even bigger hacks and cheats. Is square root of 2 over 3 bigger than 1 or less? It's less than 1, isn't it? And if I... <coughs> If I make, so if I add, I'm going to make a time less than 4 seconds. Because 1 plus something is going to be a positive denominator. It's going to be bigger. Whereas 1 minus this is going to be something small, and it's going to make that final time bigger. Well, the time can't be less than 4. Because at 4 seconds, the other dragonfly hasn't taken off yet. Any time less than 4 is some imaginary sequence of events. It's like backward in time, right? Like this is two parabolas graphed together, and they'll cross once that we want, but they'll cross again. And they cross again in some weird negative time axis position. You can graph it if you want, but that's not possible. So it actually has to be 4 over 1 minus that number. And you crunch the number. If I'm going super big brain on your form of the test, I'll actually make this a square root that actually works out. And you can do 1 minus a half or something. I'll make it fun. Okay. But I didn't have to do the quadratic formula. And if we have nice numbers, it works out really, really nice. Any questions? Okay. Oh, I need my calculator. Twenty one point eight. Did you get twenty six point eight? Do you know what you did? If 
you got 26.8, you probably solve for the other time, and then you added instead of subtracted. Right? If you solve for the time on the, s the second bug, yep, that's choice B. <coughs> Hold on. You got 26 or 25.9. Oh, something else. Okay. All right, then. Okay. I think we can stop recording, then.